Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Ninja Precision Processor with Auto Spiralizer. Included is the motor base. The base has suction feet so it doesn't move around on your counter. Pull the base towards you to release it from the counter. This is the processor bowl with the lid. Turn to lock. The marking on the lid and the bowl have to match up. To take the lid off, press this button and turn the lid. Lift up. To use with the processor bowl, there is a chopping blade and a dough blade. This is the spiralizer bowl. It's taller than the processor bowl. The collecting bowl goes inside. There are two blades that you can use with the spiralizer, the spaghetti, and the fettuccine. And they're labeled. Put your disc in. This is the lid for the spiralizer. Turn to lock. The gray tabs just match up. To remove the lid, press on this tab and turn it. Pull straight up. Your fruit or vegetable goes in the chute and use the food pusher to push down your fruit or vegetable. A cleaning brush is included as well as a manual, quick assembly guide, and a recipe book. There are recipes for muffins, salads, really healthy broccoli and carrot salad, zucchini noodles and shrimp, butternut squash mac and cheese, another zucchini recipe, a zucchini pasta, granola bars, sorbet. So there are a lot of good healthy recipes in this book and it helps you figure out how to use all the spiralized vegetables or fruit. Instructions on how to prepare your fruit or vegetable. Anything you spiralize cannot be taller than four inches. If you're doing butternut squash or potatoes, they should not be taller than three inches. The maximum width of your vegetable or fruit should be three inches. You can spiralize something as thin as a carrot, but it has to be wider than one and a half inches. Generally, you won't be able to use the slim carrots in a bunch sold with the green tops on. It's best to find the thick ones that are sold individually. There's a helpful chart with the vegetable or fruit listed, how to prep them, the type of blade to use, how to cook them, and the cooking time. When you first get the unit, wash all the parts in warm soapy water. They're also top rack dishwasher safe. Dry all the parts. All the containers and lids are BPA free. The base can be wiped down with a damp cloth and dry. To use either bowl, put it on the base and just turn to lock. Turn in the other direction to unlock and pull straight up. The food processor bowl has a max liquid line, so don't fill liquids above that, and a max line of three cups. The unit measures about six inches wide, nine and a half inches deep, and with the tall auto spiralizer bowl, about 15 inches tall. The cord length is about 35 inches. First, we'll test the food processor. Put the chopping blade on the drive gear. It'll be loose. I'll process one large onion cut into a little over one inch pieces. You can process raw meat or hard cheese in the unit. Just make sure you cut them into one inch cubes and process one cup maximum at a time. Put the lid on and turn to lock. Plug in the unit. The start stop button and the pulse button will be lit up. That's how you know the unit is ready to use. To process into smaller pieces, just use the pulse button a few times. If you want to puree tomatoes and want the machine to run continuously, just press the start button. Unplug the unit, press the tab, turn to open. Here are the onions. They look pretty good with just a few pulses. Always take the blade out first before you empty the contents. There are very few big pieces. Most of the onions are chopped very evenly. For diced onions, it's best to pulse three or four times max to get good results like this. If you pulse for longer, it'll turn into puree. It'll be a watery mess. Overall, a good job on the onions and very quick. On the lid, if you lift this tab, while processing, you can pour in oil or any other liquid. Next, we'll test the spiralizer. Turn the bowl to lock. Put the collecting bowl in. I'll use the red spaghetti blade. Lock the feed chute lid. I'll try zucchini. This is about four inches long. So if you have a regular size zucchini, you'll have to cut it into two pieces. With anything you spiralize, make sure the ends are cut off and even. Put the zucchini in the slot. On both blades, there's this pin in the middle. You want to push your fruit or vegetable down on the pin so it holds. I'll push the zucchini down and it's right on the pin. 
Press the start button and use the food pusher to push the zucchini down. And once you see the food pushers almost touch the blade, just press the start to stop button again and it'll stop. That was really quick. Press the tab and turn. There is always going to be a small piece of your fruit or vegetable left on top of the blade. Just remove that. After you process one thing, you do have to remove any leftover pieces of fruit or vegetable off the blade. And then you can process the next thing. Just lift up the blade. Just pull up the bowl. Half of the zucchini already pretty much filled up the bowl, so you're only going to be able to do half at a time. Most of them are continuous strands. There are a few small broken pieces. So instead of spaghetti, this is great for zucchini noodles. And of course, it was extremely fast. I'll put the bowl back in. Put the green fettuccine blade in. And I'll do the other half of the zucchini. Again, a small piece. So here's the difference between the spaghetti blade and the fettuccine. You can see the fettuccine is just a little bit thicker and flatter. Now I'll try butternut squash. This is the top half of my butternut squash. I've peeled it and cut both ends so they're even. I'll try the green fettuccine blade disc. I didn't have to use much strength to push down the food pressure. Piece of butternut squash. They look like curly fries. Some of them are broken, but most of them seem to be in long strands. And that just took a few seconds. I'll try the spaghetti blade for the rest of the squash. Of course, the bottom of the butternut squash is round, so you're going to have to cut them into pieces like this. That didn't work too well. I'll try another piece with both of the ends cut even. Maybe that will help. That's better. So you can see these are all in little pieces. So the auto spiralizer will process something as hard as a butternut squash without any problem. It's just you have to do a little bit of extra work. The top half was easy and it was just fine. With the bottom, since it's round, it's definitely not going to fit perfectly in the chute. You're going to have to cut it and then the cut pieces you're going to have to cut evenly. So that takes a little bit of time and work, but it did get the job done. I'll use the fettuccine blade again and try a peeled potato. This is just about three inches tall with the ends cut off and even. And the unit is loud just like most food processors. Half of the potato is in long strands and the other half is in pieces. Again, it was done very quickly and requires very little strength to push the food pusher down. I have reviewed manual spiralizers. This definitely wins hands down. It's just so much easier. There's no work, very little strength used. There's always a little bit of waste and that's the same with the manual spiralizers also. Both the auto spiralizer and the manual spiralizers require you to cut the vegetable or fruit into a certain number of inches. Of course, you're paying a lot more for this Ninja, but you're also getting the food processor with it. This is a three cup max, so it's not large. But if you just need a smaller food processor for your everyday chopping and mincing, then this should work. If you spiralize a lot and don't want to do the manual work, then of course this auto spiralizer makes sense for you. If you want to try out this Ninja, I've put a link in the description below. If you want to see what I cooked with all these vegetables, click on the link in the description below. There are plenty of recipes, healthy and not healthy, on my Anita Cooks channel. So subscribe if you need ideas for weeknight dinners, healthy meals, desserts, fresh juices, 
pretty much anything. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. Subscribe for more reviews, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.